today's uh, presentations will add value uh, to your business and in understanding more about Title 24 and how it will be implemented because whether it's January or July, it, this is coming and uh, Gary was uh, in the room when these things were discussed and decided and him and, and Kelly are two of the leading uh, experts on Title 24. Dwelling units in some buildings have to meet the residential standards. So the, to qualify as residential high efficacy, it has to be certified by the manufacturer. LED luminators not certified are automatically classified as low efficacy and they must meet JA8. They must be manufactured for use in residential. So that's kind of a tricky thing because I can take a surface wrap and put it in res or non-res. There's a concern that we have in that half of the products that are currently on our database are not residential luminaires. So we didn't get the message across correctly because a lot of people have certified non-residential landscape luminaires. There's been a lot of products that have been certified LEDs that do not belong there. This is only to classify residential. When the new list goes up, the old list is going to be retired. So if you have products on the 2008 list, you will need to recertify them according to the 2013 standards. And in the handout, there's uh, JA8. Uh, one thing that I want to bring up is that there was an errata changed. Some of you may have uh, been familiar that JA8 required 90 CRI, requires 90 CRI. The old language didn't differentiate between indoor and outdoor applications. It's been revised. What's online now says that outdoor luminaires are exempt from the 90 CRI requirement. So outdoor LEDs do not have to meet the 90 CRI. So approximately half, the, I would say this, half the products don't belong there, and it's only residential. Track lighting and turbo current limiters have evolved a little bit. This is another product. If you currently have a track lighting integral current limiter certified, you will have to recertify your product under the 2013 standards because there have been some changes. 24 volts, and they're less than or equal 50 watts. And the transformer ballast must be integral to that luminaire. There's only a single lamp per luminaire, and the labels have to be rated so that each layer, as they're removed, gets smaller. So the idea there is that you don't peel it down to 20 watts and then somebody come in later and put a 50 watt lamp in there. Once you've peeled it down to 20 watts, that's what the uh, occupant is instructed that they shall put no more than that in. <coughs> Line voltage incandescent is the maximum rating wattage of the luminaire. An incandescent luminaire is an incandescent luminaire no matter what you install in it. So it doesn't matter, there's, there's no adapters, there's nothing you can do to an incandescent luminaire to make it anything other than an incandescent. We also say that recessed luminaires will not be recognized ever as being less than 50 watts. That's, that's been the biggest offender where people have been putting in recessed luminaires, calling them 30 watts when the most common lamp is a 65 watt VR. So we said, okay, if the manufacturer's label says anything less than 50, it will not be recognized. That's what that system is classified out as. Screw base adapters are not recognized. Even, I've had the inspectors call me, but, but the manufacturer says that these are classified as permanent adapters. It doesn't matter. And field modifications are never recognized for newly installed luminaires. So you can't put it in an incandescent luminaire, hardwired with an LED module and call it LED. Line voltage track. Uh, so there's basically four different options. If you have higher wattage, a higher VA rating, it's, it's only the VA rating of the, of the uh, uh, brand circuit, if you're, if you're graded to 20 amps. If you're, 20 amps or less, there's four options, the VA rating of the brand circuit, the higher wattage, 
of all of the luminaires are 45 watts a lineal foot. If you use a track lighting integral current limiter that has been certified to the Energy Commission, you use the VA rating of the current limiter or 12 and a half watts a lineal foot. And the reason we do that is you cannot put a one amp breaker on 100 feet of track and expect anybody to believe that's honest. So we said, okay, it's the larger of those two. And if you use a dedicated track lighting supplementary overcurrent protection panel, it's the sum amperage uh, times the um, branch voltage. If it's low voltage, which is defined as less than 90 volts, and it has an, basically if you have a static luminaire, low voltage, and you can't change the number of lamps, you're going to use the, the combination of that system. So you're always going to have one lamp, then that's, that's the combination. But if you have, let's say you have a low voltage track lighting where you can add luminaires, then it's the maximum rating of the transformer. LED luminaires light engines for a static system is the maximum rated wattage according to IES LM79 and if it's a variable load which allows additional it's the maximum rating of the power supply and there's labeling requirements also. Now LED luminaires for non-res do not have to be certified to the Energy Commission. As a matter of fact we don't want them certified to the Energy Commission. It's, it's causing confusion in the market. Uh, a lamp is not a luminaire. If it's a lamp, according to IES, uh, ANSI, IES RP16, it's not a luminaire. Uh, it's not an LED module with a pigtail. It's, the standards do not recognize pigtails, uh, screw base sockets, screw base adapters, all of that is not considered a luminaire. Other miscellaneous, we have this catch-all. How am I doing on time? I feel like I'm going really slow. Somebody, somebody jump up and down if I'm running out of time. This is a catch-all, anything we didn't think about. Some people have been wanting to say, well, I don't like the, the top 10 rules, so I want to use rule number 11. This only applies to new stuff. If we're in between cycles and somebody comes up with a new product that is not addressed, it falls into this category. Residential high and low efficacy. So there's a table. We used to say high efficacy was 30, 40, 50, 60 lumens per watt depending on the wattage. And a lot of people, their eyes glazed over and they said, would you just give me a rule of thumb? So we got rid of the 30, 40, 50, 60 lumens per watt. There's, there's federal standards, there's you know, Energy Star, there's a lot of standards on lamps right now, so we no longer have to say the efficacy. So anything on the left side of the table is high efficacy. Anything on the right side of the table is low efficacy. So basically pin-based CFLs with electronic ballast, pulse star metal halide, high pressure sodium, um, Anything with a GU24 socket rated for LED, for CFL, the LED certified to the commission as high efficacy according to JAA, housings rated for only LED and induction lamps. Now, if you take a socket, if you take a housing and you have nothing in it but a GU24 and the housing is rated for LEDs, it is expected before the building inspector signs off on that, that the engine is in place. So even though the standards say that the housing with the GU24 socket with a LED label is an LED luminaire, the engine has to be in place before it gets signed off by the building inspector. Low efficacy, any kind of incandescence, low efficacy. Um, line voltage, low voltage, high efficacy lamps and low voltage luminaires, they're all classified as low efficacy. Mercury vapor, are there any mercury vapors left anymore? I think they're, I think they're gone. Uh, track lighting is low efficacy. Even you could put track lighting with all LEDs. It's the same problem that we have with incandescent sockets. You unscrew it and you flip something else in without a building, uh, without an electrician. 
modular components. Uh, am I okay? Yeah, you have 10 minutes. I have 10 minutes? I have to move really fast. Like electrical boxes. Those are all considered low efficacy luminaires for residential. So the residential uh, has another catch-all that 30, 40, 50, 60, if it's none of the above in the, in the list. Lighting alterations, there's three kinds of alterations. Kelly touched on this a little bit. There's lighting system alterations, there's luminaire modifications in place, and there's wiring alterations. Now we, all this convoluted language was basically we were trying to differentiate between routine maintenance and a retrofit. The, uh, the advocates wanted to go after retrofits. So that was the target. And so this holy, whole 40 luminaires and 10%, etc., had to do with differentiating between retrofits and, and maintenance. So lighting alterations are any kind of, basically a gut rehab um, of, of a luminaire. If, if you're, or a gut, gut, group, a gut rehab of, this, of the system, you're taking lights down, you're putting new ones up. That's a lighting alteration. Um, there are exceptions that if you are going to disturb asbestos, there's an exception when you don't have to do things. And portable luminaires are not, uh, are not uh, part of lighting alterations. Uh, anyway, the lighting system is modified, etc. This is the definition of what is a lighting system alteration. Luminaire modification in place is basically a retrofit. Now, we called it that because we wanted to come up, we wanted to make it clear what was the difference between a retrofit and maintenance. So if you replace lamps and ballasts with a light quantity or, or quality, if you're going, uh, you know, like T12s to T8s, electronic ballast, that's a luminaire modification in place. If you're going, uh, you're putting an LED panel in a luminaire, that's a luminaire modification in place. So if you're doing something that's a general remodeling, that is not a luminaire modification in place. If it's not the, if it's not the cause or the result of any panel board wiring, etc., it's not a luminaire modification in place. Lighting alterations, which do not qualify as lighting modifications in place, are lighting alterations, or lighting system alterations. Wiring alterations have very specific definitions. If you do these things, you have to bring the wiring up. Uh, if you're just adding occupant sensors to a box, that's not regulated by the standards, if that's all you're doing. Um, so there's two kinds of thresholds. Used to be if you change 50% of the fixtures in the room, you have to bring that room up to code. Now, if you change 10% of the fixtures in the room, you have to bring that up to code. So that's the lighting alterations. Now, the luminaire modifications or retrofits have two requirements. The first is you have to change, or you have to plan to change. Nobody is going to be tracking and logging whether somebody does 40 luminaires in a space. It's understood that if you're doing a major retrofit, 40 luminaires is a lot for what we consider a building space. A building space is either the complete story of a building, uh, the complete floor, the entire space of a single tenant, or all of the common area. So if there are plans within a 12-month calendar period, or 12-month period, to do 40, then you have to look for the second threshold, which is the 10% threshold. So once you recognize that you're going to have 40, and then any room that does 10%, then has to be brought up to code. So there's two thresholds, that's kind of confusing. Now, if I do, I have 20 rooms in a building, and I only do retrofits on 10 of those 20 rooms. I only have to do the 10 rooms. I don't have to do rooms for which there's no modification going on. The new bug ratings, um, Kelly went over this for outdoor lighting. We replaced cutoff requirements. We used to have cutoff, uh, which full cutoff or cutoff uh, meant for anything over 175 watts. That's gone down to 150 watts and we've replaced cutoff with bug, so they have to be bug rating to meet, the, meet, the, uh, meet that code. The California quality lamp specification, this is a voluntary specification, which means that you can sell products in California that do not meet this LED lamp. This is an LED light bulb standard. 
But what it is, it's we have institutionalized what we consider a quality link. The California Public Utility Commission has directed the utilities that you shall not rebate any LED lamps, like light bulbs, that do not meet the California quality specification. So it's voluntary in the fact that it's not Title 20. You can sell or offer for sale in California products that do not meet the California specification, but you cannot get utility rebates from the investor-owned utilities on lamps that do not meet this. And uh, basically, it has dimming, beam shape, uh, 90 color uh, index, so there's some requirements. Uh, I'm retiring from the Energy Commission. In February 1st is my retirement date. I hope to be able to do training and, and consulting after that. So this is my advertisement to a captive audience. Uh, here's my personal contact information. Um, so anyway, did I make it? So now we have questions and answers.